All right, we're off on this very grizzly, drizzly day to a place that's got uh, a bad reputation for being grim and run down, so that's gonna be fun. But it's the only thing we can really make it in today's daylight. So, here we go. Going under a bridge, Nadiana at the helm. Very nice, I like this place. Yeah. so something pretty terrible has happened we've just been very slowly making our way down the river and we've come off early earlier than where we were, where we were going to come off because we've seen somebody who has committed suicide and the, we saw them at the side of the river so we need to stop and call the police we're guessing um, person's obviously not been found so I, I'm not sure how we're gonna do it but we've just arrived at the closest um, dock and we'll just try and find someone to help us yeah So it's been a while since this actually happened. We're just coming to edit the video now. And at the time it was quite shocking. So we didn't really record too much about kind of what happened. But now, uh, as we can kind of look back, we thought we'd just put a little bit of information about, about what happened really. Yeah. Basically what happened was we were cruising down and then like in a slow speed and we just saw a guy kind of fishing behind the trees and then we, we thought he's just fishing but then as we go past by like the image that I saw was just a guy without a head and I just don't dare to look but Mark like you kept oh, yeah, I saw he, he basically hung himself and um, yeah I noticed then and then Nadiana didn't turn around and yeah but then as you know from the video we pulled in at the first port and then I called the police which was interesting in its own right because I was trying to speak French to the policeman and then I asked him if he spoke English and he said no and then I said uh, I've witnessed or I've seen a dead person I, I like in French I said I said I've seen a Je regarde un person du mort, which I guess is right, like a dead person. And then suddenly he started speaking English and he gave me a telephone number of a different police station. The second police station, we just like said straight away that we found a dead person and then they just got so serious and then they showed up less than probably five, five minutes. Yeah, the guys that we called then, the number that we got, and they were really good. What we did when we saw the person, I took a screenshot on Google Earth and just circled where we were and I was showing that to the police and then they managed to track down the bank of the river and find the person. And we were... We spent a lot of time in the back of an ambulance because um, they were dealing with everything that happened and we were basically just sat uh, in the ambulance. I think the paramedic had to speak to us about like shock and, and all that. And, and also like the CSI yeah. wanted to talk to us like to yeah. just investigate but I, I don't think they did too much because it wasn't really a crime scene, it just felt... I, I just felt like at that moment the feelings are so mixed. I was a bit scared, I was also 
very sad, like thinking about every possibility. Like if we are there not earlier, there earlier. It, might, it might not happen. It was terrible. Oh, I don't know, I feel so insincere. It's difficult yeah. to talk about really because we weren't the real victims. It's sad, but life just goes on anyway. It also give us another perspective of how we should cherish our lives. So this is the place where Andy at the last place said it should be condemned because it's terrible and it is. Nadiana's just slipped on here and done a knee. We're only here to get fuel. Uh, that's the barge or the fuel ponting. But yeah, this place is disgusting. I don't know how it even makes a profit or how it's even allowed. Some of the pontoons are absolutely crazy. Well, it's great, Bavain. So we woke up the guy from his slumber. Huh? Oh, really? Oh, I might have got it on camera. Cool. So we just woke up the man from his slumber and we were, we were around there and now we've come round, but as we've come round, another boat's come in to get fuel. So we are perched beside this, um, Affairs, Maritimes, I think it's. Oh, yeah, it's pretty nasty holding on to it. No. Nadiana slipped. <laughs> yeah. Come to this port at your own risk. Both are seeing river, one higher than another. <laughs> All right, we made it through that last lock, and it was uh, very stressful. But we're in Paris now, pretty much. We've just got one more day. Uh, it's going to be pretty busy. Um, trying to get to the Arsenal Marina. Yeah, we're gonna stay here on this free pontoon. Doesn't look the safest thing, so we've got everything valuable locked inside. Um, I can see a few undesirables hanging around, so yeah, I should be all right. And hopefully it's not too rocky because these boys keep coming past. We're trying to create 
a little trap with fishing wire. <laughs> and we set up this trashy look so people would think we're poor. They don't steal from us. <laughs> what they don't know is we actually are poor. <laughs> but we don't want them to think we're not. <laughs> So we hide our fake North Face jacket <laughs> <laughs> and put out our disgusting wet socks. <laughs> Trap! <laughs> It'd be so funny if at night we hear this, <laughs> or tomorrow morning we get tripped over by by this. <laughs> You wake up, there's just someone stuck in it, like, yeah. <laughs> We've got a human! Alright, I think it's enough. <laughs> I'm actually more excited about the tripping over that part than people stealing ours. <laughs> 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 just funny, what we're doing. <laughs> And we got our can of diesel in.